In the 4th century, a pivotal figure emerged in Roman history, Emperor Constantine I, often referred to as Constantine the Great, whose reign spanned from 306 to 337 CE. The enormity of the Roman Empire prompted Emperor Diocletian to institute a solution to its unwieldy governance. This solution came in the form of a tetrarchy, dividing the empire into two halves, with Diocletian ruling the east from Nicomedia and appointing Galerius as his Caesar. Meanwhile, the western portion was under the control of rulers Maximian and Constantius Chlorus. However, it was a young Constantine who would ultimately reshape the fate of this divided empire. His emergence marked a turning point in history. Born either around 272 CE or later around 285 CE in Nysus, modern-day Serbia, Constantine was fortunate to grow up within the imperial court due to his father's dual role as a military commander and Caesar of the West. Guided by Diocletian, he imbibed principles that emphasized safeguarding the empire against external threats and ensuring the establishment of a just and orderly society. The events of 305 CE saw Diocletian and Maximian as surprising abdication, leading to a shifting of power. This transition brought Constantine back to the West in 306 CE. He accompanied his father, Constantius, on a military campaign against the Picts in Britain, during which Constantine earned the title Britannicus Maximus for the second time. However, destiny took a swift and unexpected turn when Constantius passed away in July 306 CE due to leukemia, earning him the nickname the Pale. With his father's demise, Constantine demonstrated a knack for swift and impactful decisions. His 307 CE attack against the Franks showcased his capacity for ruthless action, as he eliminated two Frankish kings and presented their remains in the amphitheater of Augusta Trevorum. Balancing this firm stance was his compassionate nature, demonstrated by his restoration of previously confiscated church property. This gesture not only caught attention but also began to earn him the respect of the Roman army. Constantine's leadership qualities came to the forefront as he solidified his position as a trustworthy and respected leader. His blend of bold decisions and empathy proved invaluable in gaining the loyalty of both Caesar and new soldiers. These traits laid the foundation for his future as a Roman Emperor. Following Constantine's death and his accomplishments in the British campaign, expectations ran high that Constantine would ascend to the role of the new Emperor of the West. Yet, despite his claim to the title of Augustus, this distinction was bestowed upon Severus, a close associate of Galerius. This decision did not sit well with Constantine or Maxentius, who had both felt overlooked in the past. Galerius, on the other hand, declared himself Caesar, further muddling the situation. Maxentius, asserting his ambition, proclaimed himself Augustus in 307 CE, triggering a series of events that would bring further complexity to the power dynamics of the Western Empire. With the support of the Roman populace and the Praetorian Guard, Maxentius extended his realm to encompass territories such as Sicily, Corsica, Sardinia, and parts of northern Africa. This period saw a chaotic and tumultuous power struggle involving up to six individuals vying for control of the West. In this intricate web of conflicts and political intrigues, Constantine faced a defining challenge that would alter the course of history and secure his place as a prominent Roman emperor. Suspicion arose due to Severus' connection with Galerius, leading Constantine and Maxentius to join forces against him. With former Augustus Maximian on their side, they managed to sway Severus' army leading to his capture and death outside of Rome. Emperor Galerius responded by attempting to invade the west with his forces, but his endeavor proved unsuccessful. The year 308 CE marked the formation of the new Tetrarchy under the Council of Diocletian. Licinius was appointed as the new Augustus, while Constantine retained his position as Caesar. However, the twists and turns did not cease there. Maximian, who had been living in Constantine's court as an advisor, resurfaced from retirement in 310 CE to claim the title of Augustus. He spread the false claim that Constantine had perished, aiming to secure his position. This maneuver prompted Constantine to take a firm stand, refusing to aid Maximian, who, facing desperation, ultimately took his own life. Simultaneously, Maxentius' rule in Rome encountered grave challenges. 
His dwindling popularity among the citizenry was exacerbated by burdensome construction projects, such as a new basilica and a grand statue in his honor. The resultant discontent fueled riots and uprisings, resulting in the tragic deaths of numerous Romans. Throughout this crisis, Constantine watched with strategic patience, comprehending that the Western Empire was on the verge of collapse. It was amidst this turmoil that Constantine saw his moment to act. With an army of 40,000 soldiers, he made a bold decision to cross the formidable Alps and invade Italy. His objective was clear, confront Maxentius and seize control of Rome. This daring move marked a pivotal chapter in Constantine's journey as he embarked on a path that would eventually lead him to become one of history's most influential Roman emperors. The subsequent battle would have profound implications, reshaping the course of Roman history and cementing Constantine's legacy as one of the most influential emperors the Roman Empire ever saw. With minimal backing in Rome, Maxentius made the pivotal decision to confront Constantine in a final, decisive battle, the Battle of the Milvian Bridge, a pivotal clash that transpired in 312 CE. The night before the battle, an extraordinary phenomenon unfolded in the skies that would alter the course of events. Constantine beheld a luminous cross, beneath which was inscribed in hoc signo Venus, translating to in the sign, you will conquer. The same night, a dream visited Constantine, featuring the appearance of Jesus Christ who directed him to bear the cross symbol into the impending conflict. In response, the Christian emblem replaced the old standards, emboldening Constantine's forces. Despite numerical inferiority, Constantine achieved a decisive victory, forcing Maxentius to flee towards Rome. Yet, the tale took an unexpected turn as Maxentius met his demise in the river, his body found amidst the aftermath of battle. This moment marked Constantine's conversion to Christianity, a pivot that had far-reaching consequences. The merging of church and state initiated a new era, beginning with his ascension to the role of the new Augustus in the West. His first major decree, the Edict of Milan, issued shortly after his victory, ensured religious tolerance for all faiths, a decree that would be co-signed by Licinius, further shaping the fate of both the Roman Empire and the Christian Church. Galerius held the position of Eastern Emperor, while Maximinus Dias stood as Caesar. Following Galerius' demise from cancer, he reversed his anti-Christian edicts, leaving a power vacuum. Maximinus and Licinius subsequently engaged in a conflict over control of the East. This dispute resulted in a temporary division, with Licinius governing the Balkans and Maximinus overseeing Asia Minor and the Eastern territories. This uneasy truce eventually fractured, culminating in a significant battle in 313 CE on the Thracian Plains. Just as Constantine fought under the sign of the cross at the Milvian Bridge, Licinius adopted the same symbol in his struggle against Maximinus. Licinius emerged victorious, leading to Maximinus' demise and Licinius' control over the East. To solidify his rule, Licinius took drastic measures, including executing the offspring of Galerius and Severus, as well as Maximinus' family and even Diocletian's daughter. An unsettled peace existed between Licinius and Constantine, partly due to Licinius' marriage to Constantia, Constantine's half-sister. Their initial clash in October 316 CE civilly resulted in Constantine's triumph. A second encounter near Adrianople saw Constantine gaining territorial concessions in the Balkans. Over the subsequent years, Licinius' attitude towards Christians underwent a stark transformation, marked by executions and church destruction. This prompted Constantine to marshal his forces for a second showdown at Adrianople. In the aftermath of this battle, Licinius fled, eventually meeting his end. By September 324 CE, Licinius faced defeat in Chrysopolis, leading to his surrender. Although he initially sought a return to private life, Constantine reneged, leading to Licinius' execution in 325 CE, solidifying Constantine's supremacy and unifying the empire under his rule. This sequence of battles marked a watershed moment, bringing stability to the Roman Empire. Constantine, now the solitary ruler of the empire at the age of 52, recognized the need for a new capital. Despite efforts to rejuvenate Rome, its decline was undeniable. Dissolving the Praetorian Guard further underscored this shift. A new seat of power was sought, and after considering ancient Troy, Byzantium emerged as the ideal choice. 
strategically positioned on the European side of the Bosporus Strait, Byzantium could control Black Sea traffic and boasted a secure harbor, the Golden Horn. Constantine's vision transformed Byzantium into a new imperial capital through extensive projects, including the construction of avenues with statues, Christian churches like Iiri, and pagan temples. In 330 CE, the city was officially inaugurated by Constantine, marking the birth of Constantinople. Throughout his reign, Constantine exhibited religious tolerance, embracing both pagan and Christian traditions. Though he officially converted to Christianity in 312 CE and was influenced by his devout Christian mother, Helena, his coins still bore pagan symbols. Despite this, his policies included prohibiting pagan sacrifices, ending gladiator contests, and suppressing ritual prostitution. Constantine's convocation of the Council of Nicaea in 325 CE aimed at promoting unity. The conference yielded a Nicene Creed, which solidified the foundation.